In this video, I want to take a look at volumes of evolution about the x-axis. Now, the material in this video is aimed at first-year students only, or students who are only doing the AS part of A-level further maths. If you're doing both years, then this, like I said, is just first-year material, so there shouldn't really be anything too challenging within this video. Now, there's two examples in this video that we're going to work through together. Um, these examples and the solutions are quite lengthy, so I think the two examples here should be plenty to get us um, through the video. So let's just get started here. We've got the curve C with this equation, and we can see this in the diagram below. Now, we've got this shaded region R here, and that's bounded by the lines x equals minus 1, x equals 2, the x-axis, and the curve C here. Okay. Now, we've got the shaded region R, like we said, and that's rotated through two pi radians, or in other words, 360 degrees, about the x-axis. And what that does is it forms a solid of revolution. And what we're asked to do here is show that the volume generated V is equal to 27 pi over 2. Okay. So where do we begin? Well, we need the formula for the volume of a revolution. So that's V equals, now this is an integral. So this is an integral here of pi. So the question here is whether it's pi y squared or pi x squared. And this is where usually the first mistake is made. So in this case, because we're rotating about the x-axis here, then this will be pi y squared. Okay. So we always choose the opposite variable to what we're rotating about. So like I said, if we rotate about the y-axis, then that's pi x squared. Okay. So... We've got that to get us started. We also need some limits to this integral. Now, the limits here we can see clearly from our diagram. Our lower limit must be minus 1, and the upper limit must be 2 there. Okay. So all we need now just to get us started, we're nearly there, is y squared. So y is equal to the square root. So y is the square root of x plus 4. So y squared in that case will be this squared. So in that case, we just get left with x plus 4 there. Okay. So let's pull all of that together. That's equal to the integral. Now this would be pi times y squared. Now in a moment, I'm going to take this pi out in front because we can apply linearity here because pi is just a constant. So we can take it out in front, but I'll keep it here just to make it clear what's going on. y squared is x plus 4. So put that in there, x plus 4, and we're integrating here with respect to x, okay? Now, like I said, I'm going to apply linearity and take this pi out in front, so v is equal to pi, and what I'm also going to do is perform the integration. So I've took the pi out in front, and I get left with x plus 4 here as my integrand. So we're integrating here with respect to x, so this x plus 4, we integrate this. So if we integrate x here with respect to x, that would give me x squared over 2. Both of this integration is nice and straightforward. It's just basic integration. And we've got 4 here, so when we integrate that with respect to x, we get 4x. Now, don't forget the limits here. So our lower limit is minus 1, and our upper limit is 2. Now, we need to substitute these limits in here. And remember, we start with the upper limit and subtract the lower limit. So v is equal to pi. So if we start with the upper limit, 2 squared would be 4. Divide that by 2 would give me 2, plus 4 lots of 2, which is 8. So 2 plus 8 gives me 10. Now we subtract the lower limit, and I'm going to put the lower limit here in a bracket just so we eliminate any potential errors with signs. Now minus 1 squared would be positive 1, over 2, so that's a half, and then plus 4 lots of minus 1, so that's minus 4. So I've got a half minus 4, which would give me minus 3.5, or in other words, minus 7 over 2. Now, if you really wanted here, you could just put this into your calculator. Um, obviously, you'd hope here that it gives you that in exact form because what we need to show is that this is equal to 27 pi over 2. So I'll do it by hand just to show the full process. So v is equal here to pi. So what I've got here now is 10 minus minus 7 over 2. So that would be equal to pi lots of 10 plus 7 over 2. So if you subtract here, negative number then that's the same as adding that negative number so 7 over 2 or oh, it's the same as adding if that makes sense and um, that should hopefully be nice and straightforward so 10 plus 7 over 2 if i get this 10 here over a common denominator that would be 20 over 2 i've got pi lots 
of 20 over 2 plus 7 over 2. So 20 over 2 plus 7 over 2, that would give me 27 over 2. So V is equal to pi lots of 27 over 2. And in that case then, just multiply here, V is equal to 27 pi over 2 there. I notice that's exactly what we wanted to show here. So there we go. Boom, happy days. That's our solution. So example done. Let's take a look at the next one. So in this one here, we've got our equation y equals 1 minus x squared. And we've got the shaded region R. Okay, now this is bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Now this region R is rotated through two pi radians. And this forms a solid of revolution. So it's rotated about the x-axis. Okay, and just like the previous um, example, we want to find that volume. So again, we're using the same formula. So V is equal to the integral of pi y squared here. Okay, remember we're rotating about the x-axis, so it's pi y squared. Now, again, we need a couple of things here. We need the limits. Now, if we look at this straight away, the limits aren't defined on the um, sketch here, our diagram. So we need to figure that out using the equation. So can we factorize this quadratic here? Well, we actually can because this is the difference of two squares. So we can write that as 1 minus x times 1 plus x. Okay. Now this must be equal to 0 to obtain these solutions. That's where it cuts through the x-axis. So y is equal to 0. And from here, we can get two solutions. So x will be equal to 1 and x will be equal to minus 1. Okay. So this would be minus 1 here. And this will be positive 1. So we've got our limit, minus 1 and 1. We also need y squared now. So if y is 1 minus x squared, y is 1 minus x squared, then y squared here will be 1 minus x squared times 1 minus x squared. Okay? So if we expand this using um, FOIL or any method that you're happy with, claw method, grid method, whichever, I do 1 times 1, giving me 1. 1 times minus x squared, so that would be minus x squared. But then I've also got minus x squared times 1. So I've got minus 2x squared there. Okay, so minus 2x squared. And then finally, we've got minus x squared times minus x squared. So that'll give me x to the power of 4 there. And notice that's positive. Okay, so that's our y squared. So we've got everything we need now. So let's start using the formula. So therefore, v is equal. Again, I'm going to take pi out in front now, okay, using linearity here. Remember, pi is just a constant, so we can do that with no problems. So our lower limit is minus 1, our upper limit is 1, and y squared is this here. So that's going to be x to the 4 minus 2x squared plus 1. We're integrating here with respect to x. Now, Let's go term by term here. So v is equal to pi lots. So we get x to the 5 over 5. So x to the 5 over 5. We then get minus 2x cubed over 3. So again, this is just basic integration. We're just adding 1 to the power, dividing by the new power. And then plus 1 here, so that will become plus x. Okay. Now don't forget the limits here, minus 1 and 1. And again, we start with the upper limit here, and then we subtract the lower limit. So v is equal to pi lots. So that's going to be 1 to the 5 over 5, so that'll be 1 fifth. Minus 2x cubed over 3, so that'll be minus 2 thirds. And then plus 1. So that's the upper limit. So let's just put that in a bracket here, just so we can see clearly. And we subtract the lower limit here. So uh, minus 1 to the 5 over 5. So minus 1, so that's to an odd power, so it will still be negative. So that's minus 1 fifth. So minus 1 fifth. We've then got minus 2x cubed over 3. So if x is minus 1, minus 1 cubed is minus 1. Times it by 2, that's minus 2. Divide it by 3. So we get minus 2 thirds. But that's minus minus 2 thirds. So that's the same as plus 2 thirds. So like you can see here, you have to be very, very careful with your signs. And then um, plus x, so if x is minus 1, plus minus 1, it's just the same as minus 1. Okay. 
So that looks good. Um, hopefully no mistakes. We will know by the time we get to the solution here. So what we need to do now is clean this up. Put this into your calculator. I'm not going to put all this over a common denominator. Um, that is too much effort. So v is equal to pi. So what we're going to get here. So one fifth minus two thirds plus one. Put it into calculator. What I get here is eight over fifteen. I get eight over fifteen minus. Again, put this into your calculator here. So minus one fifth plus two thirds minus one. I get minus eight over fifteen. Okay. So what I've got here is eight over fifteen minus minus eight over fifteen. So if we finish this off over here. What I've got then is pi lots of 8 over 15 plus 8 over 15. Now clearly I'm putting in pretty much every step that I'm doing here. You don't have to write that. You could just write that as 16 over 15 if you prefer. Um, but if I write it in full, so I've got pi lots of 16 over 15. And therefore, if we multiply through, we get that v is equal to 16 pi over 15. Okay, and finally, there we go. That is our solution. So, like you can see, it is very, very easy to make a mistake um, with your signs here, for example. Trust me, I have made that mistake in a previous recording, so I know the pain um, very well of making a mistake. But hopefully, this video has helped. Um, and that brings us to the end of this video. So, in the next video, we're going to take a look again at volumes of revolution, but this time about the y axis.